straight into it. So, uh, Kyle, just give us a summary of uh, the team's preparations ahead of tomorrow's game. Yeah, well, we've had a couple of days off to start off with. Uh, with obviously, two two uh, losses. Yeah, so we needed. We, it was nice to have a couple of days off actually, because it's been it was pretty full on from leaving Oman to coming straight into some some extra competition, and emotions were up and down. So, taking a bit of time to. Uh, just reflect on that and, and find our feet a little bit. And the last couple of days we've had some practice, so the guys have realigned themselves, got themselves prepared uh, for what we're going to face over the next couple of couple of days. But obviously, New Zealand game starting tomorrow. So it's been around a week since you last played your, um, your last game. Do you, do you see that more as a help than a than a hindrance? Per se? I think so. I think definitely. Look, uh, the emotions. We're, we're all very high, you know, getting through to the Super 12s. It was, it was something that we set, our, our, set as a target and we believed that we could do getting through, getting through to the Super 12s. But um, when you get through, then, then there's even more eyes on you and, and the pressure sort of just, the, that bar just raises just that little bit further. So uh, giving, our, giving our guys a chance to sit back in many ways and just watch and see what's going on. Uh, and, and be able to reflect and, and regroup in many ways and try and take what learnings we, we, we can from, from the group stage and then into the Super 12. So look, there's some fantastic teams that we've got to, got to play still and we've played against two obviously very dangerous teams al already. So uh, lo lots to learn, lots to take on board uh, and hopefully now we can put this preparation into, into play. We saw a glimpse of the great team spirit that you guys have um, during the first round of matches in Oman. How important is that going to be in reacting to um, the defeats that you've had in the Super 12 so far and, and looking to win tomorrow's game? Yeah, there was obviously a fair amount of disappointment after the, the two performances that we, we've put in since uh, making the Super 12s. Uh, putting it into a, in, into a bigger picture, we, th those performances especially um, weren't necessarily how we wanted them to go, but... Uh, Cricket has its has its ways of of keeping you very honest and keeping you very level. Uh, I'm a big believer of riding the wave and, and trying to use some of the emotions when you need to use them, but also you also need to be okay with sitting back and taking a step back and just figuring out where you actually are, reassessing and then and then moving forward again. So look, we've got some great uh, camaraderie amongst our group and and the. The culture is excellent, and the, the, each and every one looks after that culture. Uh, so we look after each other as well, and, and we try and try to have a bit of time together. And, and like I said, regroup. We had a, got out on the golf course the other day, which was entertaining. Um, probably far too many shouts of four on the golf course than there should have been, but uh, the guys needed that. Needed to take their mind off the off the cricket and give themselves to uh, give them themselves a chance to just clear their mind. Uh, and yeah, look, we're back onto it now. The the team vibe is very positive, very very positive. Uh, look, we're we're sat here in the Super 12s uh, in a position that we all wanted to be. Probably going back two years ago, we we're all stuck in our houses. So look, we're all very grateful, and I'm sure not only us but a number of teams are grateful to be all be here right now. So brilliant. And looking at New Zealand themselves, um, are there any particular challenges that you're really looking forward to facing in tomorrow's game? Uh, well, first of all, we know they're a fantastic side. Um, there's been a couple of strong performances by them, and um, guys, guys putting their hands up to win, win, win some games. Uh, we know that they're, they're going to come and, and try and push, push us as hard as they possibly can. Like they're, they're a brilliant side. They, they unfortunately just missed out in the 50 over World Cup in, um, a year or two ago, and uh, they'll be. They'll certainly be pushing to try and you know make the later rounds of this competition, um, but pressure does some funny things sometimes, and um, we'll be looking to assert ourselves on them as much as we possibly can, uh, and uh, try and put them under under some pressure. And of course, you guys have now been together for a long period of time, obviously since the first round and even before that into the um, into the preparation stages. Just give us an idea of how you guys, aside from golf, keep entertained as a group. Yeah, uh, well. First of all, I have to say that our time in Oman was was brilliant. Uh, I thought the the Oman cricket looked after the the World Cricket League, which we played in there. First of all, fantastically well, 
and they looked after the group stage over there. I thought they were brilliant. The, the accommodation in the resort that we had to spend our time on, it was actually, uh, it, it gave us a bit of outside time, if that makes sense. You know, there was space to, to uh, venture out uh, on, the, on the resort, which was really helpful. So uh, that was a, a nice way to break up being in a bubble to then having that resort in the middle, which gave us a bit of time to um, guys to explore and, and have have a bit more space. And then obviously coming into this phase where it's a, um, a little bit stricter again, uh, it's given us a, a, I think it gave us a lease of life really after having been in that, that excellent resort, resort there. So and look, it comes with its challenges. I think we've only had a little taste of it compared to a number of these teams in this competition already. I know. I know that a number of these teams have been in many bubbles already and, and we've only had a little snippet of it. So there's a whole heap of respect goes out to, to those teams who've, who've been through that and, and everyone who's still competing at the, at the highest level, um, trying to put on a show for everyone who wants to watch, really. So um, I think a, a pat on the back, really, to those people who've got through that because it, it, it can be tough. Great. Thank you very much, Kyle. Um, we'll now go over to questions. Sorry, I'm just sure if you can get me on the microphone here. Um, we've got some questions on Zoom, so I will now ask uh, Jamie Durant, please, for your question. Hi, Kyle. Uh, kind of, first of all, how's the uh, how's the finger after kind of sitting out the the Namibia game? Yeah, it's okay. Um, I think I'll probably just get a few man up pills from the uh, from the physio, and I'll be all good to go. But um, yeah, it was it was less than ideal the timing timing of how things panned out and you know picking up a little bit of a niggle, um, but equally I was uh, very confident in the group when they in our team going into that Namibia game, and you know cricket like I said before cricket has its weird and wonderful ways of keeping you very honest and um, three wickets in the power play certainly does that to you so we'll be looking to make amends for that though in the next game but yeah fingers all good. So you kind of now say five games into this kind of World Cup. What would you kind of say is the kind of the biggest, the biggest lessons or the biggest kind of takeaways that, that you've had so far? I think, obviously, well, we had a pretty extended break from any cricket uh, before we we came into this, you know, extended period of games. Um, being able to manage and, and deal with pressure and try and make uh, good decisions under pressure is a real key real learning for us. Uh, we're quite an experienced side now, so uh, I believe that guys have been in that situation a number of times now, and you know, every, every game that we tend to play, it's always qualifying for a tournament of, of some shape or form. So uh, being able to deal with pressure is something that we'll continually have to keep getting better at. But um, I think, aside from all of that, the realization again, being, being hit hard by a couple of teams in Super 12, in the Super 12 phase, has really sort of hit home where the bar is raised to again. Look, it's been a long time since we faced that. Uh, and um, it's nice to know where it is. And it's nice to get a reality check as well. Uh, but it's also nice not to be afraid of it. So uh, we have to uh, be willing to take that on. Look, in the last, what, six weeks, five weeks, we've beaten three full member sides. We haven't played cricket for two years. so. Um, being three full member sides in that short um, period of time is uh, a real achievement, I would say. Uh, lastly, for me, I mean, this, these kind of games that you've got coming up against in New Zealand, India and Pakistan, these are the kind of the, the level of games that you want in as a, an associate nation, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. You get to measure yourself uh, against the best. Uh, there's some fantastic cricket, cricketers there. And actually, one of the things that... I mentioned to our group was there's there's a whole uh, heap of pictures of World Cup winning sides in the lift in the hotel and trying to uh, we obviously back ourselves to perform and, and play some good cricket but with those pictures in the uh, in in the lift in the hotel was how many of our guys have actually played against a number of those players individually amongst different teams whether it be franchise teams or county teams or, or whatnot and and before we before some of the guys even realised the amount of players that they've played against have actually won World Cups is stacking up, so so guys have experience against some of these these players these high quality yeah. players but we have to be we have to go into the game as as equals uh, and believe that we we are equals and we have to go in uh, not afraid to try, not afraid to.
perform and believe that we're capable of doing it. So, yeah, some amazing challenges. Look, it's only going to push the bar up in Scotland. It's only going to push the excitement up about the game in Scotland and, and other associate countries. Excellent. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Jamie. We'll go to Graham McPherson, please. Hi, Kyle. You okay? Hi, Graham. Uh, just kind of following on from that, how do you as captain kind of get into the players that not to get too kind of overwhelmed by the names and reputations by these teams you've got coming up and just kind of focus on your own game? Because it's obviously tough when it's guys that you know very well the, the other side of the wicket. Yeah. Um, I, I think one of the reasons for, sing, for mentioning the... Uh, the pictures in in the elevator. It might seem quite an irrelevant little little comment, really, but uh, it was trying to make the guys remember that they have played against or played with some of these people who've actually that we're going to play against in the next couple of days. So just remember that we are on the on the same field as them. We're we're there for a reason because we've we've reached this stage because of our performances. So uh, we have to keep. Keep believing that as, as as best we can, and 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 go into these games with um, as much clarity and and freedom as we possibly can to try and compete against these these teams. And um, I have no doubt that if we play this game, you know, most of it's a mental approach. And if you go in there with a really clear mind and a positive approach, we you will be surprised what what teams can achieve and individuals can achieve. This is maybe the first game that you guys have played over here where there maybe isn't an expectation or a kind of feeling that you, you're kind of favourites to win almost. Does that kind of, does that ease things at all when there, there isn't that expectation or pressure on you? I think uh, every every game, every team, every player puts some sort of expectation on themselves. Uh, we, we have to, we have to be okay with that as well. Look, we, we have to, like I keep saying, we have to, I keep using the word believe, but we have to keep believing that we we're, we can play against these teams and we deserve to be here. And that, that's that's why we why we are here. There's always going to be pressure, whatever game you play in. You know, we, we thought playing the group games in Oman, we thought there was plenty of pressure there. And there certainly was because, you know, what that had on on the line was 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 huge for Scottish cricket and huge for associate cricket. So uh, making a, a, a scene in many ways and getting through the Super 12s is just just what we feel we we deserve after a, a good old stint at, at performing well over the last sort of five six years. Um, but you have to keep earning the right to get to where we are. You know, you don't you can't just turn up. You can't just then go back home and think you just practice again and you come back and it'll happen again. It won't happen again. Some of these teams who are going to have to qualify for the the next T20 World Cup. I, I can't even imagine the pressure and the thoughts going th through some of these teams um, when, they, when they have to fight for those, those places. So, look, expectation's always there. And you have to have some on you, but you have to be willing to embrace it and, and, and take that on so that you can actually let your skills out. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Kyle. All the best. No bother. Okay, and we'll take a final question, please, from Shubham Madan. Yeah. Hi. My question is to you is that how does your team is being united over the years, like despite being practicing less due to COVID and all, how you all are united united for and what is your motivation when your team is not performing well? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think being united for any team is really important, but I'll I'll explain how we how we've stayed together as a group um, through the whole pandemic. It was certainly a challenge. It, it was a challenge for anyone and any team uh, in more than more than just in a cricketing front. But uh, guys, you know, ultimately we're all, we're all a big group of friends. Uh, we're, we're all very close. We keep in contact. And I think that was the, the most important thing that we did throughout uh, the challenges that we all faced was we kept in touch. We kept the camaraderie going as best we could. And, and sometimes we challenge each other to try and find ways to improve, thinking outside the box, what can you do to be a, be a better player or, or be in a better uh, physical condition to, to perform when we come, when we get back to playing. The other thing was, uh, as, a, as a group, we, we had to keep believing and keep uh, seeing the road to where we were going to. Okay, so we needed to know that Right, what is it we were preparing for? 
sometimes when you don't know what's further down the line, it's very hard to find the motivation to, to keep developing your skills and keep improving. So we had to be very clear that, look, this World Cup is it's a year down the road now. Obviously, it got postponed a year. And that hit, hit home very hard to a number of players because the motivation levels dropped. And then there was other tours that we were meant to have and guys were preparing for those and then they got cancelled and then prepared for another one and they get cancelled. So you can imagine guys kept getting a getting hit by disappointment because after after all, if you're training for six weeks and the tour doesn't come off, it's like, well, what have we been doing? But in the back of our minds, we always knew that this tournament's here. We always knew that it was going to be a, a big seven weeks of cricket and fortunately, everyone worked worked very hard together and kept each other going to make sure we were in the best possible shape to be here. So, um, I imagine every team had those challenges, but that was how we that was how we faced ours. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, answer. All the all the best for the upcoming matches. Thank you. Okay, thank I can you. see I can see we've just got one more question here from Adriana Wright. Mm -hmm. So, Adriana. Hi, Kyle. Um, so you've talked about the team being on a journey at the moment. What's next after this World Cup? What are you looking ahead to for this team long term? Yeah, uh, good question. I, I think in, in many ways, you know, sh short term, I think as a, as a group, we need to continue to obviously try and perform and try and get catch up with the cricket that we've missed. We've got uh, lots of World Cricket League competition to to uh, get our teeth stuck into and and you know there's the obviously the T20 World Cup uh, that we've qualified since getting through to Super 12s uh, so there's a number of things number of things there but as a as an organization I think we need to be bold and we need to be brave and a group of players we need to be bold and brave to try and find ways to keep progressing this this group uh, we have to uh, not be satisfied with just just being okay and not be satisfied with just getting through to the super 12s we have to now start uh, pushing the boundaries just a little bit further um, and and how that looks i don't know exactly but uh, i would encourage everyone back in scotland to keep supporting this group of players uh, and keep supporting the the organization as best possible because um, there will be we know that there there will be someone out there uh, and someone who wants to come on that journey with us. And it's so important that we, uh, we, we group together as a group of players and as an organization and find, find that path that's going to take us to, to that next level. And, and uh, we're going to have to have some help getting, getting there. But uh, we need to have some bold and brave plans and bold and brave people who want to be involved with us to help us get there.